Hey everyone, I'm Chris Gebhardt with NASA Spaceflight, and this is your weekly Boca Chica update video. The following videos and photos were captured by NSF team members Mary, at Boca Chica Gal on Twitter, and Jack Byer, at the Jack Byer on Twitter. By far the biggest event this week in Boca Chica was the back-to-back to back firing of the Raptor engines on Starship SN9. On Tuesday, SpaceX attempted to static fire the vehicle after a shorter than planned firing the week before resulted in the need to redo the test. Tuesday's attempted static fire appeared to get within three minutes of ignition based on when the 10 minute siren provided to Boca Chica residents was heard. The test was aborted, however, and SpaceX decided not to recycle and try again that night. Instead, the Starship test teams came back the following day with a goal of fueling the rocket and firing its three Raptor engines not once nor twice, but three times in rapid succession. This type of rapid refueling and reuse is part of Starship's overall operational design, with Elon Musk stating in 2019 that Starship was being built to fly at least three times a day. After the test, Elon revealed that two Raptors were damaged in the static fires. It was later learned that one Raptor, number 44, incurred damage on the first test of the day. SpaceX teams nevertheless decided to carry on with the second and third engine firings and simply turned off Raptor 44's ability to start. This was seen on the day when only two of the Trivents were seen in operation for tests two and three. Elon also noted that the two damaged Raptors would be removed and replaced with other engines already at the facility that had been slated for use by other Starships. Raptor engine 44 was removed on Friday and brought back to the production site for repairs. Later that evening, a replacement Raptor was seen at the Pad B suborbital launch mount. At this time, it's not yet known when Starship SN9 will be ready to fly, but replacing a Raptor engine means an additional static fire test to clear the rocket for flight, as well as an investigation into the cause of the damage. Nevertheless, when SN9 does lift off, it won't travel as high as SN8 did in its test last December. SpaceX has refined SN9's flight profile down to 10 kilometers to improve the odds of favorable weather conditions for the test. The same reason was given for lowering SN8's test altitude from 20 kilometers down to the eventual 12.5 kilometer test flown. Nearby, at suborbital pad A, teams poured new concrete as part of an ongoing effort to revitalize the pad after it sustained some damage from the SN8 static fire campaigns, as well as wear and tear from repeated uses across the Starship series of vehicles so far. Additional methane was also delivered to the fuel farm in preparation for the continued testing and eventual flight of Starship SN9. Also in the area, work on the orbital launch pad continued in earnest this week, with the layout of additional electrical piping, as well as delivery and installation of equipment that will be needed to support the operational use of the pad as early as this year. Some of that new equipment will support flights not just from the orbital pad, but the continued suborbital tests as well, like the liquid oxygen distiller. This major piece of equipment will produce the liquid oxygen used in both the Starship and Super Heavy booster tanks. This type of on-site production of critical commodities like fuel and oxidizer is an important part of the Starship design, as the system will have to produce liquid oxygen and liquid methane from the Martian environment after arriving on the Red Planet. Over at the production site, the most significant work this week related to the new 3mm test tank that SpaceX has made good progress in assembling. The new tank, which is made from steel that's 1mm thinner than the current steel used on Starship SN9, will validate the welding practices as well as overall structural integrity of the tank against computer modeling. This will involve bringing the tank out to the launch and test area, and purposefully pressurizing it to failure with cryogenic liquid nitrogen. On Tuesday, workers were seen attaching a flipping jig to the thrust dome for the new 3mm tank before flipping it upside down for stacking with other components, including the forward dome. Work then continued throughout the week finalizing integration of the tank and adding some of the internal equipment that will be necessary for the test campaign. Also at the production facility, work continued on Starship SN10 in the high bay. Most of the work this week, though, was internal to the vehicle, with one major exception. 
On Thursday, one of the two aft flaps was installed onto the vehicle, marking yet another critical step in Starship SN10's assembly before it will be rolled out to the launch pad for its own test campaign. Other notable events around the production site this week included work on Starship's SN11 and SN15 in the mid-bay, production of new methane header tanks, and additional build-up work on Starship SN17, including the midsection for its liquid oxygen tank. Work for the first Super Heavy booster, called BN1, also continued around the SN9 static fire campaigns. Unfortunately, it wasn't all good news for the Starships at Boca Chica, as teams continued to disassemble the Mark I Starship, taking sections of its nose cone over to the scrapyard where they joined SN6 awaiting final recycling. The move of the MK-1 nose cone provided a nice view of the liquid oxygen header tank along with associated composite overwrap pressure vessels, or COPVs, that would normally be used to pressurize the tanks during flight. That's all for this week, thank you so much for watching, and remember we welcome any and all comments on this video in the comments section. If you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a member. Membership comes with some perks like access to our members-only Discord channel, as well as preview video clips earlier in the day. You can also visit our online store which has a range of items for all your space goodie needs. Thank you all for watching, live long and prosper.